Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to Front Row Chaos. I am your host, Travis Smith, and today we're going to be talking about something that probably not many of you know about, and so I thought it might be a good topic to cover, which is an odd topic, I will admit, but uh, I think you might find some benefit to this podcast episode because today we are going to be talking about the bidet. Now that is spelled B as in boy, I-D-E-T, bidet, and it's a French word. And it is what we commonly know as a toilet that shoots water to clean you after you do your business. So we're going to go back and we're going to explore a little bit about what the bidet is, where it came from, and how today you could get one of these things really cheap. Now, a typical bidet in the modern European setting is a little bowl that sits on the side or to the side of your toilet. So you do your business in your toilet, and then you go over to the bidet and you proceed to clean yourself with water. It it, it can be real expensive or it can be really cheap. Now, you can, I've seen them at Costco, and they're actually a toilet that has the bidet built in. And really all the bidet is, is a, is a way to, to shoot water into your nether regions and it will clean you with water. Now, the expensive toilets I've seen upwards of eight to 1200 or, or more uh, dollars. And those are, they have heated seats. Okay. They have, uh, dryers that, that flood your bottom area with air right after you use it and so there is a uh well there is those are nice and no doubt about it i have never never personally used one of those but i can imagine that they would be extremely nice now the bidet that i got was just from amazon one day i was on facebook and this ad came across about this bidet and it's really not a bidet as you would think in European standards. It's not a separate toilet. It's just an add-on. And what that means is it's just got a little control panel. So when you sit on the toilet seat, on your right, there's a little control panel. And it has a setting that you can turn the, the water to warm. You can leave it on cold. And you can also wash the front and back areas of your rear end, <laughs> which is... Well, let me just tell you this. It's phenomenal. I, I, I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, me and my son and my house use it extensively. And I'll, I will I got to be honest, I don't like to go anywhere else without it. But I do, obviously, because I don't take it with me. But it's as simple as this. It literally costs me, oh, probably $35 on Amazon. And it's, an, it's just an add-on bidet. So it has a little nozzle in the backside underneath your toilet seat that goes, when you turn the water on, the little nozzle comes out and it shoots water. And now let me tell you, it shoots water hard enough. When I installed this thing, I had no idea how much water it would shoot out. And if you are not sitting on the toilet seat when you hit the lever... It will shoot a good eight feet from the toilet if you have it on full blast. So it it provides plenty of water in a short time to get you clean as you can even imagine. I mean, it's almost like you doing your business, jumping in the shower and turning your rear end around to the nozzle. That's what you're getting, but you don't have to get undressed to do it. It's right on the toilet seat. You do your business. You hit the little, uh, you can control the water pressure, a little soft or harder. You clean yourself up, and then you just pat dry with some toilet paper. And usually you only need one or two slices of toilet paper, and you're off and running. And you're cleaner than you can ever imagine. So the bidet like in in the Europeans, like I said, is is another bowl that sits to the side and it is there to wash one's genitalia, perineum, inner buttocks, and anus. 
this was a standard practice back oh centuries ago and so the bidet has has kind of come a long way over time and then the bidet is considered uh standard in a couple of countries italy for one um requires since 1975 that you actually have that if you're building a home you have to have a bidet in the bathroom now they're primarily used to wash the genitalia perineum and inner buttocks and anus but some bidets have a vertical jet intended to give easy access for washing and rinsing the perineum and air and anal areas so this is a separate little thing you've probably seen in some showers where it's a handle right you can move it around wherever you want to so that's another type of bidet but that's like more like called the bidet shower and that's not something that i really consider part of a bidet but the the, the bidet is a is a plumbing fixture again that's a, it's installed as a separate unit in the bathroom beside the toilet and shower and sink and so it, users have to straddle it to do their 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 cleansing okay now when you do that it squirts water cleans you up real good and you're done but those are the type of bidets that Nowadays, if you get a bidet, again, like I saw at Costco and things like that, you can get the entire toilet. So you would just replace your toilet, put a bidet in, and you would have all of the super nice things like the heated air dry and the heated seat and the water that comes out on demand. Now, mine is a little, it, it, when you do an add-on bidet, mine has two water lines one is cold water and one can be warm water well i do not have the luxury in my house to have an on-demand hot water heater which i believe would be an essential piece if you had a bidet because when you hit that water on the warm side it'll be warm like that where mine it has two lines that i, I attach it to the sink water so what's coming out to wash me is sink water you know clean water and it just goes right from the sink right to the bidet and the line kind of runs behind the toilet so it's not hidden perfectly i mean if you did a house nowadays you would have a separate line for the bidet and that would be that would be the best way to do it if you were going to do a a remodel or a, of a bathroom or something like that just put a separate line in for the hot and uh, you would have it made but mine by the time you have if you do, I always have it on the warm water setting, but in my house, you got to run the water for a while before it gets warm. Well, you'd be sitting on that toilet seat for a while before you'd ever notice the water being warm. And I thought that might be a big issue for me. I thought, man, cold water squirting right into me might be a little uncomfortable. Well, I got news for you. That is not true, at least in my case. It doesn't bother me like I thought it would. In fact, the benefits that I get from it are so much more that I don't even, it doesn't even bother me at all. I, I got to be totally honest. I've, I've tried to sit there before and wait for the hot water to come or warm water, I should say. And it doesn't really make that much difference. But I would tell you if you got, if you were able to have that hot, on-demand hot water heater or if you're able to have the nice bidet, the actual toilet itself, that would be a real plus. Um, that would... That would eliminate a lot of and some of them they, they have like i said the heating elements inside the bidet they have controls for illumination so they have built-in night lights deodorizers and activated carbon to conceal any odors so they are they, they've come humongously far since they were first you know since they first came out but bidets are something that um like I said, a lot of Europeans uh, use them, but the bidet appears to have been invented by a French furniture maker in the late 17th century. Although no exact date or inventor is known, the word bidet means, is a French word, it means pony. And so the reason they came up with that name is because when you used to sit on the bidet, you would straddle it and it would resemble, I guess, a small pony that you would be riding on. So that's how they came up with the name bidet, okay? And bidet 
which B-I-D-E-R means to trot in French as well. So pony, bidet, bidet means you're sitting on a little item, I guess you'd say. But the earliest written reference to the bidet was in 1726 in Italy. And even though there are no records of Maria Carolina of Austria, Queen of Naples in Sicily, requesting a bidet for her personal bathroom in the Royal Plaza of Caserta in the second half of the 18th century, the bidet did not become widespread in Italy until after World War II. The bidet is commonly associated with the chamber pot and the bordelais, the later being a small handheld chamber pot. So when the bidets first came out, right, we didn't really have bathrooms. They were in the actual master bedroom, and that's where they were kept until we got plumbing in the 1900s. And the bidet was moved from the bedroom to the bathroom and became more convenient to fill and drain, which makes sense, right? In 1928, the United States applied for a patent for an anal douche, is what this guy called. John Harvey Kellogg applied for this patent. In his application, he used the term to describe a system comparable to what today might be called a bidet nozzle, which can be attached to a toilet to perform anal cleansing with the water. So that's your handheld job that they thought was a big deal, which really isn't, right? It's just a nozzle you can hold. So it's really not um, a bidet like we're talking about today. Now, in the early 1980s, that saw the introduction of the electronic bidet from Japan with names such as CleanSense, Galaxy, Infinity, Novita, and of non-electric attachments such as the GoBidet. These devices have detachments that connect to existing toilet water supplies and can be used in bathrooms, lacking the space for a separate bidet and toilet. Many models have additional features such as the instant heating and warm water, night lights, or a heated seat. These are the kind of things that I think would be really cool if you wanted to go out and invest in an actual bidet toilet. You would get all of these features that I don't have currently that I think would be really, really cool. But bidets are becoming increasingly popular with the elderly and disabled because it's so much easier to clean yourself. I know because I worked in the geriatric world as a nurse that it's kind of hard for older people to take care of good cleansing back there. And so the bidet really makes that possible nowadays. And why it hasn't caught on more, I really am kind of... uh, floored by it especially with the cost now of course if you're going to go out and buy a bidet toilet it's going to cost you quite a bit of money but if you just get the add-on like i did the add-on is cheap and it's just as effective as far as what it actually does no it doesn't give you instant hot water like the toilet no it doesn't have a heated seat no it doesn't have night lights and it doesn't have a deodorizer but That being said, it still squirts water where it should and takes care of those problems really quickly. Bidets are common bathroom fixtures in the Arab world and predominantly in Catholic countries, such as Italy. Like I said, the installation of a bidet bathroom has been mandatory since 1975. Some of the other countries don't have that. Like as far when you go farther up north in Europe, you don't have as many bidet usage as you do in the southern part. Why hasn't it caught on here? like it has caught on there that's a question i really can't answer and they really don't have a whole lot to tell you why and in the 1980s the first paperless toilet was launched by a manufacturer in japan and the combination of the toilet and bidet which also dries the user after washing this is the this is the current bidet that's that they're talking about the one that does all those bells and whistles that i mentioned earlier And those are something that, again, you can get if you really want to, but they're not necessary to do the job that the add-on bidets do. And after a slow start in the 1990s, electronic bidets are starting to become more available in the United States. American distributors were directly influenced by their Japanese predecessors as the founders of Brondale, established in 03, have indicated the popularity of add-on bidet units like the one I have is steadily increasing in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom, in in part because of their ability to treat hemorrhoids or urogenital infections. 
I don't have either one of those, but I imagine if I did, that would probably be a great thing to have because it really cleans that area well. In fact, if you can imagine like that little commercial you see on TV where they do a wipe with the uh, toilet paper and you can see some leftover residue without a bidet, that's obviously going to happen. In addition to the shortages of the, pr and another thing here too is, remember how we were all racing out to Costco and Sam's Club to buy toilet paper when it came in on the truck? Well, that just made the bidet even more popular because now, you know, you don't have to rely on so much toilet paper. I will honestly tell you, my toilet paper consumption has dropped tremendously because of the bidet. Because I know that I don't really need to do a whole lot of wipage. I'm one of those three wipe guys, you know, everything's three, right? Three, three, three strikes are out, three wipes, I'm good. But with a bidet, I can get away with one after I'd use the bidet. And that's really really just to dry myself off because there's really nothing left to wipe off except just water, clean water, to be honest with you. So in addition to the shortages of toilet paper, due to the coronavirus pandemic has led to an increased interest in bidets, especially here in the United States and around the world, of course, but a lot here. Is the bidet hygienic? Well, let's look. The, but using a bidet is much cleaner than just using toilet paper, like I mentioned. With toilet paper, you don't get the same clean feeling as using water. Using toilet paper can cause irritation and do not do a good job cleaning. With a bidet, you are using water, which cleans the area effectively and quickly. It's just like when you get something in, on your hand, washing it off with water is much more effective than just using a piece of paper to clean it. That's obvious. The bidet is cost effective. There are bidets out there that can be quite expensive, like we talked about, but with some research, you can find very cheap bidets that get the job done just as well as the more expensive ones. Also, having a bidet will allow you to save on the cost of toilet paper. Having to buy toilet paper for the whole family can get quite expensive, like we know, and using a bidet will eliminate that need for toilet paper, and it'll save you thousands a year potentially, depending on where you buy your toilet paper and how much you buy. Another big thing, the bidet is environmentally friendly. Using toilet paper wastes a lot of paper. And if one has a bidet, he can save on using as much toilet paper and save the environment. Americans using a lot of toilet paper each year. And if they use the bidet instead, many trees would be saved. Using a bidet is a go green method for the bathroom that eliminates the use of toilet paper. Even though the bidet uses water, it is still about the same amount as washing your hands. And that's the truth. Washing your hands, if you think about, well, you're supposed to sing happy birthday twice. That's what they say as far as good, effective hand washing. You're supposed to sing happy birthday to you while you're washing your hands. It doesn't even use that much to clean yourself after you do your business with a bidet. So it does save a lot of resources. The bidet doesn't take up space. Like I mentioned, you can add that bidet onto your toilet. And the nice thing is this, you add that bidet onto your toilet, you don't have to use it. So if you have somebody come to your house and visit and they have no idea what these controls do, they don't have to use it. So it's there if anybody wants to use it. So it's not like an automatic, you do your business, it senses that you've done something and it shoots water up you. No, it's all user uh, manipulated so you have to push the little lever down and you have to do those things otherwise you don't have to use it but the one I have when you push the lever down the little nozzle drops down comes out of its little sheath does its spray and when you come when you stop the water it goes back into its little holder or sheath and it's and it stays there so it really doesn't get dirty because it doesn't really stay down there if anybody doesn't use one or if anybody has a blowout like we've seen on the back side of toilet seats, it doesn't have that issue with a bidet because it's hidden behind a little, um, little sheath that it comes out of. So it doesn't take much space at all. In fact, again, you don't have to use it or you can use it. So it's really cool to have if somebody wants to use it. And with the one I have, it has a self-cleaning mode. So when you're done, if you want to just make sure that you didn't get any little spray items on the nozzle itself, you can hit this little lever, it says clean, and it'll kind of flush itself. 
and clean the nozzle it's and then the nozzle goes back up into its little holder that's super easy the bidet i can i set my bidet up my little add-on bidet in less than 10 minutes and pretty much no tools were necessary i just took the two screws out that holds the 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 seat put the bidet on put the toilet seat back on put the same screws back in and tighten them up that's it i mean literally you don't have to have a plumber come over you don't have to have anything special to do but just unscrew the seat put the seat back on that simple and once it's installed it's ready to go you attach the water lines and you're off and running super super simple to do uh really uh <laughs> i have told people that have come to my house hey if you got to do some business go in that bathroom there and give that bidet a try. When I first got it, I was the only one in my house to use it. And my wife still doesn't use it yet, but I'm working on it. And, but my sons, except Tanner, all love it. And I mean, love it to the point where, like I said, once you start using one of these little guys, you don't want to really go anywhere that doesn't have one. And I have never been to anybody else's bathroom that's had one. But after using this, it is something that I just can't imagine that I, I don't, I'm really kind of floored that why I didn't have it before. I, I'm really, I just don't know. You know, I, 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 it, it's, it's hard to explain, you know, why this was something that uh, slipped my, my train of thought. And maybe it's because the add-ons, you know, weren't available, you know, back when I ever, I never really thought about it because i never been to Europe so I don't know really much about bidets at all until that Facebook ad hit me and I thought well I'm gonna give that thing a try bidets are popular in Europe they're popular in South America Asia and beyond but again bidets hop the pond of European colonies in South America as early as 1700s bidets also made it to Japan and much of Asia over the last uh, over the course of the 18th century Bidet use around the world has also spread between classes, becoming a fixture in the home of families across socioeconomic spectrum. So it's, it's hitting everybody because everybody has to do their business. And if you're going to do your business, you might as well get as clean as you possibly can. The one place that bidet toilets could not take root was North America. The U.S. and Canada remain resistant to the idea of bidets well into the 20th century. American impressions were largely shaped by false perception. American soldiers serving in France during World War II saw bidets installed in brothels and associated them with sex work. Of course, they would also have been found in many French water closets if they had the time to look around. That perception put the adoption of bidets to a halt in the U.S., but technology and time have started to erode American reluctance toward bidets. The bidet wasn't static over the centuries. By the 1700s, mechanical pump handles helped generate the first bidet sprayers from a nozzle in the basin. The advent of indoor plumbing made it easier to supply clean water for bidet use, and the added water pressure made cleaning hands free. With indoor plumbing, the need for a separate basin for a bidet and the extra space it required in the bathroom made less sense. And by the 1980s, Japanese bidet toilets combine new technology to create the lavatory equivalent of rocket ships with toilet seat heaters, automatic open and close function, and other comforts as we use today. Bidet toilets are and attachments quickly grew in popularity after those upgrades. Today, roughly 80% of all toilets in Japan have bidet function. Today, many of the bidet users utilize a seat bidet or a toilet seat attachment like we talked about. These allow homeowners to quickly retrofit their existing toilet with a device that uses a nozzle to generate spray of cleansing water, reducing or eliminating the need for wasteful toilet paper. And while we're on toilet paper, you know, there's nothing wrong with toilet paper. Obviously, we have to have it even if you have a bidet. But when you live out in the country, as I do, and you're using a septic system, a bidet is really helpful because you don't have all of that paper going out to your septic system to hopefully not, but it could eventually clog your leech lines. And so it's really a, an added benefit to people that are on septics 
because you don't have that waste that you're going out there and you're hoping it breaks down and it doesn't get in the lines and, you know, plug them up. That's huge. And then BioBidet is known for making high quality products with innovative features and excellent customer service. So if you're looking for somebody who makes bidets, BioBidet is one of them. They are not an, a an advertiser on my show or anything. It's just uh, something that uh, comes up that you can look at and see what the, uh, you know, if you're looking for one that actually has uh, the, all those little bells and whistles. But, you know, it's all it's all who... Uh, it's all what you want to do. It really is. Um, you you got to remember that humans have washed with water throughout history, obviously, in oceans, rivers, bathtubs, and showers, religious ceremonies, beliefs, blah, blah, blah. But the ancient Roman public toilets are an early example of using water specifically to clean the nether regions. Romans would use a wet sponge on a, on a stick to clean themselves called a tessorium. During some parts of history, bathing was limited and even considered dangerous or immoral, believe it or not. But we've mostly understood that water helps get things cleaner. A germ theory and modern hygienic practices emerged. So did the understanding that washing with clean water also stops the spread of disease. Indoor plumbing soon brought clean fresh water to more homes the history of the bidet starts way before indoor plumbing and the invention of the shower though early bidet users were an easy way to keep clean it was a labor intensive and expensive to fill an entire bathtub with water so cleaning smaller areas of the body was a good compromise historically the practice of washing one's private parts in a bowl of water often placed on a chair was quite common but until the 19 or sorry the 1700s that French invented that French invented a piece of furniture just for that purpose, which is now the bidet. <clears throat> and like we talked about before, people often wondered what bidet means, and it just means pony or small horse, just like you would sit on a little horse if you were going to ride it. So that's what it first came out to be. So the bidet is is something that uh, <laughs> it's a great add-on to your bathroom. It is something that I, I promise you, once you use it, you will be like hooked. Like it's the biggest non-alcoholic, non-nicotine fix that you can get because it really, when you get off of the toilet after you've done your thing, it is, you feel like you just got out of the shower and that's no joke. I mean, it really feels cleaner than you can get it in the shower <laughs> without going into too much detail i think you know what i mean there's nothing left there but what's supposed to be there and i think you know there's no there's no dingle balls there's no there's nothing there that can cause you any problems later on in the day and you know that you've left the bathroom literally cleaner than when you came into the bathroom <laughs> so with that said, the bidet, I think, is something you should check out. I have, again, no sponsors for this show. It was just something that I've, that I've, I've latched on to over the last couple of years, and I thought, hey, I'm going to get it out there to my audience and see if anybody can benefit from it, which, to be totally honest, we're all human, so I know you would benefit from it. Just, just to uh, inform you of what could be out there that may help you, may help a loved one, if you have somebody that's having issues with that, this will help tremendously. And again, I absolutely thank you for listening to my show, Front Row Chaos. And we are going to have some special guests come up in the next couple of weeks. I am taking off to watch my son's graduation in Missouri. And this episode will hopefully be out by tomorrow or Wednesday of this week, early May. And I just, again, thank you and appreciate you for listening to Front Row Chaos. Be safe and have a great day.